talk to us about what we can expect to see out of you guys in the etch and deposition technology world in the in the next couple of years and how is that going to enable smaller tighter line widths all that kind of stuff sure so what's unique about plasma therm when you talk to us versus any other etch and pecud equipment suppliers is that we don't supply our main focus is not the silicon world where the name of the game is tighter geometries our focus market is what we call the specialty markets, which is all the markets surrounding the silicon chip. Um, we do gallium arsenide, indium phosphide, we do MEMS, we do LED uh, gallium nitride. So we do all of these other technologies that are not always driven by the geometry as much as they're driven by chemistries, by um, the alloys that are being used, by other things, not necessarily just the uh, just the line with. Right. Go back 18 to 24 months. Put yourself back there. You're looking ahead 18 to 24 months. You got a technology challenge in, in front of you that's got your engineering teams wor working to solve. What was that challenge, and how did you get through it? Right. So in our technologies and our focus markets, uh, what you will see is similar issues like the mainstream silicon. For example. One of our key markets is um, wireless um, chips, so um, um, HBTs and HEMTs devices. And in that arena, those are gallium arsenide devices. One of, one of, the, one of the, the key steps is the packaging step, where they, they're drilling via holes from the backside after the wafer has been, ver has been thinned to around 50, 60 microns. Um, so, we help our customers develop the, the process to etch those, those via holes where that become the contact from the backside, obviously in a controlled way, in a faster way. So if you look at what we have developed over the last um, 12 to 18 months, we've done significant improvement. Our etch rates have, um, are close to double than what they were uh, 12, 18 months ago. And as a result of that, that improves the throughput, improves the productivity of the systems. So we're transitioning slowly away from 300 millimeter to 450, mm -hmm. right? Um, there you have all sorts of issues, planarity being one of them. What other s kinds of issues are you guys addressing at those larger wafer sizes? Or does it, are you sort of agnostic about that? It doesn't really matter. To us, it doesn't matter in the sense that we're, um, that's not our primary mar focus market. Uh, we're still, it, it's interesting because you, obviously the mainstream is the largest semiconductor right. portion of the market. But if you look at all of the other markets around it, there are markets that are still doing processing on two inch wafers. Um, right. LE majority of the LEDs that are being produced today are still being done on two inch wafers, two inch sapphire wafers. So that's the world we live in. So even though we carry similar challenges in terms of geometries and so forth, but we're doing them at a, at a different scale. We're, we're not directly involved in the 300 millimeter and the 450 millimeter markets. Um, so can you talk about LEDs a, a little bit? I know a little bit about the technology. I know that binning in, in LEDs is a, is a huge issue yeah. um, for certain applications. Uh, are, do you guys have a role to play in helping improve um, that binning issue over time? Absolutely. So w with the LEDs, in terms of the binning issue, what you will find is majority of the performance of the LED is determined by the, the deposition of the stack. And that's an MOCVD process. We're not, we don't directly play in that. But what you will n find out is you can further enhance the the performance of the LED. For example, uniformity of the etch all the way out to the very, very last bit of the edge of the wafer because LED, LED devices are so small in size that you want to minimize the edge exclusion so that you can generate as many LEDs as possible out of one wafer. So as a, as a normal challenge, the two things that you will see is an increase in the substrate size so when I said today most of the LEDs are being produced on two inch, very rapidly the industry has already moved. Some people have made the jump directly from two inch to six inch. 
Some have gone from two to four to six. But clearly there is a shift in, in wafer size. People are, companies are already going for larger substrates and they're almost on the same path as the silicon world was in the sense that with the larger, with the larger substrate sizes, then you go into single wafer handling, you get into um, repeatability, better repeatability, low defect uh, rate, and so forth. You guys do a lot of R&D, presumably, internally, and you leverage R&D from industry sources, from colleges. And when we talk about industry sources, um, it's been a while since I checked in with Semitech, but those guys are, are, are still doing, uh, sure. doing the Lord's work, as they say. Yeah. Um, what are some of the challenges that, that they've identified in, in your particular space that you're kind of jointly working on for the next generation of tools? Sure. So that's another unique thing about us is that we actually define R&D as a target market. So we'll, if you look at our market segmentation, we have wireless and LED and number of these markets, but then one market segment is, c is called the R&D market. And there we specifically target larger research institutes all the way down to smaller development centers within a university environment. The reason why we, can, we segment it separately is because that's an important, important market for us, not only from revenue perspective, but also from a partnership perspective. The fact that we work continuously with universities allows us to get sort of a, a look ahead of time in terms of what else is coming down the road. So we were aware of carbon nanotubes, for example, way before the market became you know, so interested in it. And we were already working with a number of universities where, our, where they had had our equipment and they were doing some of the development work on our equipment. And that's just one example. Um, some of the things that we're working on today, uh, you were referring to earlier about power electronics in, um, in electrical vehicles. Uh, that's definitely a market that we see a significant increase in. We see a definitely in a lot of interest from the market. Um, and that is a different device. It has the device structure is different, the device um, um, materials are different, and as a result of that, the requirements for the edge and deposition are different, and we've been very active in, in that area. Um, a good example of that is etching materials, etching gallium nitride without causing damage, etching very, very thin layers, 10, 20 angstroms of gallium nitride in a very controllable way so that it's repeatable that you're etching that exact amount every time that you're etching a wafer and you're etching it with such low energies that you're not causing damage underneath. How, how, are, you, how are you innovating that? How, how are you able to do that, right? Because the, the pressure is always there to do things faster, to do things with much more precision. Um, presumably you can wring some productivity out of software, um, but um, there are mechanical chemical issues you have to deal with too. Right, so if you look at our workforce, again, referencing some of the earlier conversation we were having, we don't um, have only material science people. We have material science and electrical engineering and mechanical engineering and software. And very often, all of those disciplines have to come together and work as a team in order to develop that next step or that next technology. So in some cases, the innovation could be as simple as uh, developing a new endpoint algorithm where there is, for, we use um, spectrometers to monitor the plasma and based on the, on the, the species in the plasma, we can, we can measure how long the edge has gone or how deep we've gone in the edge and be able to stop the process. That's one way of adding more accuracy to our, our tool set. So it's integrating other technologies onto our uh, products. And that's just one example of those. And, and then, then yeah. we innovate in, re in relation to that. Then again, we innovate in terms of, okay, so here is the endpoint system. Now let's go find out all these mathematical algorithms that will simulate that endpoint um, and detect it repeatedly every time.